Hey guys, Minute Wade here, back on the Borderlands video, and today is day four of the hunt. I'm really enjoying the hunt so far. I feel like I've done alright, considering that I'm only playing for about four to five hours a day. Uh, we'll carry on with the Handsome Jack DLC and hopefully do Krieg's Mind later on. I'll start off by selling all my gear and getting rid of the stuff I now don't need to count for points and just use the stuff that I've currently got equipped. I'm pretty happy with the plasma crew and the hell shock helping me out. So all this good. So we'll get that sold. I did see a firestorm in the vendor. I, I know it's a world drop, but I'm not gonna count getting it from a vendor. I kind of see that's cheating, so I'm just gonna take it just to use for now. But yeah, the firestorm is one of these one of the four world drop items but hopefully we'll get it in a better world drop scenario most likely during today or tomorrow <laughs> so let's carry on with the with the missions in this dlc we're doing one man's treasure at the moment and this one we just gotta gather a bunch of trash there's not very many unique enemies in this dlc so getting the drops while playing this dlc is quite difficult i did get a drop here but it doesn't count for any points because that's not a specific drop. Uh, further into playing this, I was quite lucky because I found a seeing dead and this one's not as bad. It's got action skill damage and max health so I took that one knowing that's going to help me out a little bit. I had to go up against the janitor bot Stanley I believe so carry on doing this mission to get it. I don't know if Stanley is a unique boss that has a drop but um i left it in anyway just to see if we get lucky from him there he is we'll go take him out i hope you are enjoying these highlight videos at the moment i know i've been enjoying them so yeah we killed stanley he didn't drop me anything like i, said, I kept them in just because he might have but yeah he didn't on this occasion I was then doing the uh, talk missions and just chilling out. I did want a Scoville, even though I don't think it counts the points. I'm not as sure why. I'm guessing it's because it's not really a world drop. This bot did drop me two pieces of gear, uh, none of which I can use for points, though. Because that's not its drops, but if it was the Firestorm, it would have been a bit more interesting or something. We then come up against a boss which I was looking forward to, which is the Scrap Trap Nest and the Scrap Trap Prime. This was vital because I knew that Scrap Trap Prime had drops, either being the Boomer or the Lucky Seven. So I knew I was going to get some points here and it would, would be our first point to the day. It was just depending on which one we would get. I was also going to do some farming with this boss. I mean, a lot of you would have probably already seen that I farm Scrap Trap Prime for levels, Iridian money. I find it's just the easiest farm to do. Uh, so I was going to farm Scrap Trap Prime for levels in the long run. I managed to get to level 46 during my first time round though. Let's just take him out. This corrosive banger rang was quite helpful for this DLC. Especially the stage of the DLC where I'm just take where everyone, everything's just got armor and needs corrosive damage really. I went down killing Scrap Trap Prime, that was awful. He dropped me a lucky seven though, which is a nice three points and gets us off the off the mark for day four. So uh, we then and then at the last bit of the um, one man's treasure, I had Tony Bordell as a unique enemy, but I don't know. Again, I don't know if he drops anything. He didn't drop me anything this time, so we just carried on killing stuff. I was then doing some urban sprinting, almost failed with that jump. <laughs> Yeah, I did some urban sprinting just to go get a red chest to try my luck because I was a bit more aware of the world drops at this point. I got f I got four legendary pistols from this chest. Not that I was going to use any of them because they're all level one, but I took them all anyway. But yeah, all no points. That's just how it is. <laughs> uh, like I said, I went back. I did do a save quit and did a scrap trap nest and prime run before I left this area just to get levels and see if I could get the other drop being the boomer I didn't get it this time round got another lucky seven which I'd already hunted but uh, I went down and did my whole drop to the 
cliff of dreams <laughs> or ledge of dreams whatever you want to call it and did the whole scrap trap nest again for more gear uh, luck, fortunately on this time around he gave me another drop and it was the boomer so that is another three points so happy with that and started off the day quite well I think uh, I then had an odd moment with uh, two moxie holograms during the plan dialogue I had no idea what was going on but uh, thought I'd include it because it made me laugh at the time <laughs> two moxies wouldn't we be that lucky you can see like the speed I had during here like the snow drift I had and the fact that I had speed demon on for my mayhem one modifier was relatively entertaining. I didn't want loot explosion, I didn't feel like loot explosion would help me out. I got a widow maker from this constructor which was no points but I don't know if that constructor has a drop. <laughs> but yeah at this point in the game I was pretty set with the gear and the setup I currently had. Um, it was just about finding some points with world drops that I just wasn't getting and but unfortunate. I, I did come up against the fab the fabricate cater, which is um a unique boss during this DLC storyline. It didn't take me long at all. I mean the shock part of his health wasn't gonna take long with the plasma coil and I mean the plasma coil even did the corrosive part of his health, so Got that. There were points up for grabs with the Fabricator because he does have a unique drop. Uh, fortunately, it's not the Widowmaker, so it was a bit unfortunate there. But I did get one point from the Iron Cannon, which is quite common, so that's why it's only worth one point. Did have another unique enemy during All Bets Off. I can't pronounce this enemy. I'm just going to call it Quit Loco. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't get the drop I wanted. I don't even know what. I was actually expecting for at this point. I need to keep looking through the sheet. And then had Freddy the Traitor, whose opening I, I do really enjoy. <laughs> Freddy the Traitor. Now, him and his two bots do have drops. So, I was... Well, I, I knew I wanted points from Freddy and his two loader bots. So I did get some drops from Freddy. I got the auto aim, which is worth one point. Again, it's quite common. I then failed and dropped off the uh, edge. I mean, I could see it was a seeing dead. So I did, even though I dropped off the edge and couldn't get up, I was going to check out what it was because the seeing dead is obviously a class mod I'm really wanting. This one's not worth again, not worth any points. Um, but I took that one, and the other one was a seeing dead as well. So. But two seeing deads out of them, which I would use because it's the seeing dead, the Zane seeing dead, you would use. Then went up against the jackpot. Now, if the jackpot did drop the seeing dead or any of the other DLC class mods, they would be worth points because the jackpot is where the specific drop is. Uh, wasn't much of a fight, I'm not gonna lie, and I did have to quite heavily edit this fight because. Um, Taking him down was easy, but these moments where he's stalled, um, I have sped up, and he stalls like three times, so yeah, I've sped this one up by two times, because it just takes ages for him to come back, like, it was painful. In comparison to the time of me killing him, which was next to no time, so sped up a little bit faster this time. Come on, handsome jackpot. <laughs> Better times of charm. Plasma coil was doing most of the damage and my clone was doing a lot of damage. Oh, I'm just gonna just gonna skip this one. <laughs> no, I'm doing some emotes, just while I'm waiting. I mean on his final health bar, he did put up a bit more of a fight. Purely because um, he was moving around so much faster, I couldn't get any hits off on him, and I was a little bit worried here because I thought he was going to take me down. My clone had also ran out as well, uh, along with my drone, so it was just me versus the jackpot. <laughs> got my V's, did panic at the end, <laughs> get my clone as soon as he got there, but 
Yeah, I got the cheap tips from Jackpot. That's uh, three points, so I'm not going to complain too much, but I didn't get anything else. And that's the end of that DLC. So, yeah. Finally finished the story of that DLC, but it wasn't over completely. I mean, we still had the loot in the loot room after defeating Jackpot. So, and all this is up for grabs and worth points. It's been underwhelming for me in the past, so I wasn't expecting much. Um, I did cut it down a little bit, so I was just opening. You could just see me opening chests. My luck was not with me, though. You could see I was opening all the chests one by one. And nothing. I didn't get a single point from this loot room, and I can't even do it again to claim it all so was a bit disappointed and underwhelmed by that i then went on to psycho krieg's fantastic faster cluck um i love this dlc i love how wacky it is and how i just i, I love the design of it and i just think it's really i think it's a really cool dlc i like the story to be fair Side missions are a bit underwhelming in this DLC. That's probably my only complaint. But there's plenty of loot for me to try and get. And plenty of bosses for me to farm. You can see my speed was a little bit of a problem at one point. Well, I missed the jump completely. And died. But I was going so fast it was crazy. Then went up against the first set of unique enemies. Which is unique, uh, which is um, Evil Brick and Evil Mordecai. So even Mordecai didn't take too long, my clone focused more on Brick and I helped finish him off in the end. So we just finished Evil Brick off. And they do have drops, so and I don't think we'd get them all in the first time, so we would be doing some farming. Brick didn't give me anything and uh, Mordecai he gave me the plus ultra, which isn't worth anything from Mordecai unfortunately, so I didn't get anything at all. And then shot down the moon. I just left this bit in the highlights because I just love how wacky it is. <laughs> Shoot down the moon. Uh, we then had Sponge Boss, no chance. Uh, he he has a drop, so it was a good unique enemy for us to go up against at this point of the game for some points from this DLC. We got a legendary drop, and it was the Pat Mark Three, which is worth three points from Sponge Boss. No chance. So happy with that. And carried on. As you can see, my speed was. I was pretty impressed with my movement speed. I didn't really need much of a, a boost from the Snowdrift either, so I stopped using that. And I think I had a. I think I got a luck artifact on maybe like a loaded dice that I might have put on at this point in time. Uh, then had Lilith, Evil Lilith. Again, she's got drop. Her drop, I was a bit worried about because I thought if I killed her, like it might drop over the side because that's happened to me in the past when farming her. So, much like I had with Rackman on day two, uh, where he's like on the side, and um, yeah, if his uh, if their drops, when a drop grows over the side, it's kind of heartbreaking because you spend so long farming it. But. Yeah, no, Lilith's fight wasn't too bad. I wasn't at the stage where I was able to, like, one-shot her or kill her quickly. Like, she was still doing, like, her stages where she was immune. Which did slow things down a little bit for me. I mean, I, I knew I wouldn't get to that sort of stage 12, like, level 65 anyway. I did kill her. She has dropped the legendary. Couldn't really see what it was until it actually landed. And it was a convergence, which isn't worth no points because that's not her drop. I think that drop is for Dr. Benedict or something like that. We then had to go and save Maya from the Locomobius train. <laughs> Again, another wacky level. Managed to get a level. We're up level 51 at this point in the game, so we're cracking on with the levels quite nicely. Where Krieg doing his crazy slow mo opening of the gate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's that sort of stuff I love in this. We then had uh, the boss battle with Locomobius. Didn't include the whole battle. It was a bit, uh, a bit of a 
It was taking a bit of doing, if I'm honest. It was a bit sluggish, and I wasn't doing as much damage as I wanted to. But I managed to get it done. And then when the train actually fell, I got stuck quite entertainingly. But so I thought I changed to my clone, and my clone was in a worse spot. And uh, yeah, I didn't get any drops from Locomobius though, so it was all kind of nothing. And we were just progressing with the story at this point in time. I also realised that my gear wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be. It was all running at about level 42, and I was like level 52 at this point. So I went on Mayhem 11, thought I'd do an arms race at level 52, and gear up again and hope that I would walk away with something like a, a plasma coil or a tizzy, all that sort of stuff. We did have more gear that we needed to collect for points from the arms race DLC. Uh, one of which was the Madcap. So if we could extract that, we'd get some points out of it. So we're going to take that. Last time we did an arms race, I was quite lucky because I left with like a plasma coil and a hell shock, uh, which was really lucky. I've uh, got a transfusion grenade from one of the airdrops, which isn't too bad. We've got a hot spring, which is also worth points if we can successfully extract it. See, so yeah, I was just doing loot rooms and airdrops and hope to get something. I've got a Lyuda, which was very unexpected, but a nice addition to the arsenal especially for the arms race so I was quite happy to see that drop i then got a hell shock which i couldn't believe because i got one last time i did this so the fact that i had a hell shock again was amazing i also got a rowan's call which is a well dropped weapon so if i can extract that that's worth points uh, i took a, took the mad cap and the hot spring and extracted them straight away both for three points each which is a nice six points Got those extracted. I was pretty satisfied with the gear I had, especially since I had the Hell Shock, which I knew was like gonna melt Harker. Uh, the fact that I had the Rowan's Call, which was a world drop, um, or counted as a world drop because of how it drops in the actual game. So I was really keen to get these extracted. And I did actually try out the Rowan's Call against Harker while he was on like normal health. But um, yeah, the Hell Shock was. Just doing a better job at dishing out the damage, so I was yeah just quite quite um, glad to see the hell shock and wanted that in my arsenal, which wasn't a problem. I defeated Harker, and Harker does what he does and drops legendaries, and he dropped me a plasma coil, so I was even more happier because again I've got a hell shock and a plasma coil, so I've taken the plasma coil, I've taken the hell shock, taken the Rowan's call, taken the Lyuda and taking the transfusion grenade. I'm only getting points for the Rowan's Call, five points for the Rowan's Call, just because that is a world drop, so the fact that I've got it from Arms Race is helpful. And uh, yeah, carried on with the story. So went to Sanctuary and grabbed all my gear and sorted it all out, and was I was pretty happy with everything I walked away with. The fact that I walked away with Rowan's Call, Plasma Coil, Hellshock, and Lyuda from that Arms Race was kind of the what I wanted. I also put on a auto idle because it had um, increased experience, which I wanted at this point. I didn't need the snow drift because you can see how fast I'm moving around. I did include this fight with this constructor during this uh, Krieg's DLC. I didn't get any drops or any points from it, but I left it in there anyway. And you can see that this is the speed without snowdrift. So I, d I knew I didn't need snowdrift at this point because Zane's movement speed is quite high anyway. And yeah, and I was just having I was just having fun with this DLC. If I'm really honest, I didn't have the fight with Doctor Benedict, who does have a drop. Uh, I believe it is the Convergence. Uh, the Bones Call was very helpful for this fight, as you can see it is dishing out the damage, so it was a nice addition to my arsenal at this point. Uh, I did get a drop from Dr. Benedict, but it wasn't what I wanted, it was a Pat Mark III, so we'd already got that as well, and that's not it worth any points to us. We have Vault Hala, I'd already decided I was definitely going to be going into the secret room, so I am shooting all the lights one by one. So. For those of you who don't know how to get to the secret room, these are the first three of the 12 that you need to get before going in. And that's four and five. Six is in a bit more of an unusual spot. It's just to your right, falling down here. 
Then when you're in like the, the final arena up against Psycho Reaver, you've got one on the left and one on the right as you walk into this arena. I then started the cutscene before I got number nine. So there's the cutscene for Psycho Reaver. Number nine is at the centre of where you came in from, just at, just above you. Psycho Reaver was a bit of a slog. He normally is at this stage though, so it, it, I mean it wasn't too bad. I mean I got him beat in the end. Uh, once we got him beat, it was on to Valhalla, and everything in Valhalla was going to be worth points and. That was my focus at this point. I didn't get any drop from Psycho Reaver. I went and got the number 10 light for the secret room. Then worked away, worked my way up on the left hand side to go get, well, light or switch number 11, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. So we'll go get this. Here's number 11. And it doesn't matter if you run out of time during opening the room. So you can see I ran out of time here because I was trying some drops I didn't get any lucky with any drops so yeah even though I'd ran out of time it didn't matter too much that I hadn't unlocked the secret room because that's not accounted for with the time got light number 12 and that's unlocked the secret room so all these chests are worth points so similar to the jackpot DLC I uh, went round and opened all the chests hoping to get a drop so not too similar to the jackpot dlc because the jackpot dlc didn't give me anything it was looking that way though i was getting a little bit worried with all these chests so it was just not not being my luck i did have a load of dice but i i switched it out recently i did get a storm out of one of the chests which i'd already hunted but it's what it is i then started doing the little tiny switches for uh the secret secret room so there's the first three there and then started my work on four five and six so i think four is just up here there we go there's number four there's number five And there's number six. I will compile this into a short uh, video for people that don't know how that don't know how to unlock the secret secret room. That's number seven. Number eight's in this corner, and in the opposite corner, number nine. I almost missed three out, so I had to go back to the centre of the room and just get. The ones underneath the platform, so that's 10, 11, and opposite is 12, and that's, and that's it, that's what unlocks the secret, secret room, as you can see, nice. So I was hoping that this would give me some points, because I hadn't got any points so far, uh, I was quite fortunate because I've got the flood, which is worth 3 points to me, so I was pretty happy about that. I also got the epicenter, so that's worth another three points. Now I just continue to open all the chests in the hope for something else. But in the final chest, I was quite lucky because I got another Layuda Mayhem one, so I'm not going to use it compared to the one I'd already had equipped. Finished off that DLC, watched the happy ending with Meyer and Krieg, and yeah, that was it. I successfully done the DLC so I was pretty happy with the progress I'd made uh, I went back to scrap chat prime and figured that I wanted to farm up to level 65 and this was the best and fastest way I knew how to do it I'm sure I knew it was gonna get tougher I knew it was gonna come across gear I'd already hunted and but yeah it would it did get tough at times because obviously my gear was about level 52 mayhem 10 but I thought it could get me to level 65 and it did climb me through those levels eventually and i did get to level 65 which is exactly what i wanted it didn't take me too long either after that i went and did my whole trick with doing an arms race and coming out with some gear at level 65 mayhem 10 so i could go and do some proper farming i wanted a dark army or a plasma coil a good gun to get me 
started with in the main game. Didn't get anything from this chest, unfortunately. Uh, but in this chest, we did get a legendary drop, and it was a tizzy. Which is, if I extract it, worth points to me. So I was very happy to see a tizzy. It's also a very good gun. So I instantly found an extraction point and extracted that for three points, which is great stuff. Uh, and then killed this that enemy there to get some form of drop. I was still looking for world drops at this point. Almost blew myself up. <laughs> He dropped me a spy, which is worth five points if I can extract it. I then got a Malik Bane from the airdrop vendor. I took that just to see if it would help me out. I mean, it's not going to count for me any points wise. But I was still getting drops during arms race. I was lucky enough to get another Madcap, which is a little bit better than the one I was using. So I was going to take it, even though I'd already got points for getting the Madcap earlier. So it wasn't going to count for anything. And then um, I finished off the loot room quickly and you won't believe it. I've got another hell shock. I couldn't believe it at this point. The fact that I've got another hell shock, like again, like yesterday I, I got a hell shock and a plasma coil at, 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 during an arms race. I did the same earlier today and now I had another hell shock, which again is my Harker killer. So. That was level 65, Mayhem 10 as well, so it was going to be a great addition to my arsenal, so I was very happy with this Hellshock, so yeah, this is this is great stuff. So as you can see, the Hellshock just made quick work of Harker, and any any enemy I was just coming up against at this point, so I was very, the, the Hellshock had, I'd been using pretty much all day, like, even though I've been using di different variations of it, I've been using it pretty much all day. Harker didn't give me too much of a job. He dropped me some gear I wasn't going to use. Uh, but I took the Tizzy. Uh, I had the Madcap, the Hellshock, obviously, the Spy, and a Rocket Boots I'd found earlier. Five points for the Spy, five points for the Rocket Boots, as it counts as an well drop. So I was pretty happy. I walked away from that arms race with ten points. Sorted out my gear again. I didn't have a level 65 plasma coil, um, but the fact that I had a level 65 hell shot was still I was still pretty buzzing about. Uh, I then went on to I went to the uh, lecture city to check out a Typhon dead drop, see if I can get some legendaries from that just to help me out with some level te uh, level 65 mayhem 10 gear. I've got a Rosen Thorns and Maggie and a wood blocker. Not bad gear, but yeah, it is what it was. Uh, I then, at, while at Mayhem 11, I thought I'd take on um, the Judge and the High Tower crew. Because I still needed drops from these guys, uh, being the conference call and the carrier. So I killed uh, the Judge, did get a drop, and it was the conference call. Worth three points for me, so pretty chuffed with that. And we're, we're doing we're having a pretty good day of it at the moment. And then, since we're on Mayhem 11, I thought I'd go up against Killer Vault in the hopes to get a Monarch, because a level 65 Mayhem 10 Monarch would be a great addition to my arsenal. I had the Hell Shock, and even though I didn't wasn't using the Shock part of it, I was using the, the Fire part of my Hell Shock. Uh, I was doing pretty well at wiping him out, and I also I kept giving the clone my corrosive Tizzy, and that seemed to be the great, the best gun to keep giving my clone so yeah the killer bot fight wasn't as bad as what it probably could have been <laughs> the tizzy was a nice addition to the arsenal but like i say it was it, I, I used it more to give to my clone because i would just go through ammo way too quickly and yeah me and my clone managed to sandwich him and with the with that whole combo going had some drops we didn't get any points for that or the hell shot Hellwalker, sorry. Uh, no points for the class mod and no points for the loaded dice, but loaded dice would increase our luck, so I did take it. I then got a transformer from a vendor. No points were, but it did make farming Killer Vault a little bit easier, and the transformer was always a good shield to have. So I did carry on farming him because I was determined for a monarch. As you can see, I was finding all sorts of gear. 
I did find my monarch worth a mighty seven points. So we finally found a mayhem gear item. I then went back to the judge to try for the other drop. And once I did get, this, well, once I was able to see the item card, which it was surrounded by green and green um, items, to me ages, quite hysterically. I just ended up taking it all. I did get the carrier for three points, which was great <laughs> even though it took a bit of doing and then face wick and warty i normally try and face them when i'm in electric city i was just sort of farming this area for all the bosses i wanted revenge on killer vault because of what he did to me on day three really so got the case r for three points tried to get it again well i tried to give it to me again and then killed wick wick gave me two drops so my luck had definitely changed at this point well, he says. <laughs> Didn't get any points for the Cutsman because it's not his drop, but I did get dropped for the... the Fubert? The Fubert? I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry. Uh, I then decided I wanted to go and do a particular mission being the Homestead. There is a reason why I wanted to do this mission, and we'll get to that very shortly. Uh, it unlocks a unique enemy. So I face this unique enemy, enemy which is called Verminliger, oh, Vel, Vel, oh I can't say it, I'm bad when it comes to pronouncing words. Gave me a red card the first time, I'd already hunted it and already had it, faced it again and it did give me the drop I wanted and yes you've guessed it, it's the Hell Shock for 3 points and there is a valid reason to why I wanted the Hell Shock even though I'd already had it. Right, but I'd been, I'd been using it pretty much all day, just different variations of it. I then sorted out all my gear in Sanctuary. Because um, I was going to call it there for the day. So I sorted out my gear, added it all up. I managed to get my overall total for the day. So yeah, I got 66 points. Add that to the total, I'm on 201 points. Which I'm pretty happy with at this point in time. Hunt of the day goes to the Hell Shock. That's why I went and hunted it at the end, so I can count it as my hunt of the day. I use this pretty much throughout most of the, most of the day four. Uh, it was really helpful, and I got different variations of it. It was the killer that made the difference with Harker. It kept annihilating Harker, and yeah, the fact that I got it from three arms races is incredible. So definitely hunt of the day. Worth the points. Worth the value. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my channel for more Wing Away content. I'll be back tomorrow with day 5, but for now, it's goodbye from me.